What if I told you you can take the power of chat, GPT, and AI and bring that inside Excel to create the ultimate add-in? Hi, this is Randy Austin with Excel for Freelancers, and today we're gonna do just that. We're gonna be building our own add-in that's gonna work in any version of Excel. We're gonna take ChatGPT API and build the ultimate AI assistant for us. It's gonna be an incredible training. It's gonna perform absolutely fantastic, and you're gonna have your own new personal assistant that you're gonna personally make. I'm gonna show you how to do every step. I cannot wait, so let's get started. All right, thank you so much for joining me today on this incredible training. We're gonna build our first add-in that we have ever built, and it's gonna be complete with chat GPT technology. So all you need to do is click here. Your assistant's going to pop up. You can also just simply ask it any question in the world, literally any question, not just about Excel or VBA. You could ask it anything. So let's see an example of a sum if formula in Excel. All we need to do is wait just a few seconds while it generates a response. We'll click enter. It's gonna say generating response and then just a few seconds later, it's gonna come up with some samples. It's gonna also remember this formula, some of the values. Can you show me what it looks like? And you can build upon that. So we could say, can you show me what it looks like, right? So now it's gonna take that formula automatically and create that generated. There we go, there's an example. So pretty much anything you can think of, this is an add and it'll work in any workbook any type of version of Excel, this will work and it's gonna be a great training, I cannot wait. If you have not yet subscribed, go ahead and do so now. Go ahead and click that subscription icon and the bell there, that'll get you notified each and every week when I create these trainings for you. I take your ideas, your suggestions, your feedback, and I create an additional training each and every week. And that's an update for our Patreon members. We're gonna call that the Feature Fixer Focus. Any feature you suggest, or you want me to focus on an area, or perhaps fix a bug, I'm doing that on Patreon. Along with that, you're gonna get the VBA code books, and that means all the VBA code in an incredible, compact, beautiful PDF, along with early bird discounts. We're gonna also have early videos. You'll be able to access these training videos a few days earlier before they're released and a whole lot of other great options. That's on our Patreon. I hope you'll join us there. All right, let's get started on this training. We are going to be using ChatGPT. If you have not heard of ChatGPT, we've done a few videos on that. And it is basically this. It's created from OpenAI. So you want to get yourself an account. It's free. And you go to OpenAI, and then you'll just log in or sign up here. So you'll sign up, and then you'll also need a phone number. It is not necessarily available in every single country. For example, the country that I'm in, Vietnam, it's not quite available yet, but you might want a friend in another country. That's what I had to do. Get that signed up, and they'll use their phone number. You'll get signed up. And basically what we're going to be doing is we'll have this chat GPT. So here's an exact sample, right? You could say you could use the same questions, the same ideas right here inside the website. But what we want to do is we want to create an add-in. We want to bring that technology into Excel where it can be used. So it can be helpful, whether it's code questions, whether you're having a problem with a formula or something like that, it can be done inside Excel with the add-in that we are going to build. So inside here, chat the website, right? You could do the same thing. Give me an example of a sum product formula in Excel, okay? So we can do that and it's gonna wait a few seconds and then also it's gonna generate that response. So you've got the same technology here. So we've got some samples here, it's gonna have that answer. So we're gonna take all of this and bring it into Excel with that chat GPT assistant, your, little, your own little AI assistant so we can copy the code. So that's what I wanna do, bring it inside Excel. So how are we going to do that? Well, let's go ahead and show you. We're gonna create an add-in. Why don't we just create a very simple add-in so we can show you first how to create an add-in and then we're gonna show you how to build the AI assistant. So that's what we're gonna to get to now. All right, so let's say we wanna create our own add-in. We can create any type of a code. So we've got a workbook here. So what I'm going to do is gonna take this book one and I'm just gonna insert a module. And okay, any kind of module we want, it won't matter. And we'll just create this called sub test add in okay so we're going to create a little test just a little test seven and we'll just take the active sheet dot range we'll do a1 through let's say a10 and then we'll do dot value equals somebody's got to make their appearance fred fredders is the man okay so what we're gonna do is then that's basically it so all we need to do is when we run that code it's pretty simple so we're just going to run that 
and what that's going to do is going to take that automatically okay so now what we can do is we can also assign that to a shortcut key so i'm just going to delete that and then what i can do is i can go into the developer if you don't have the developer tab available just go into the file options here and they'll take a look at the customized ribbon and then make sure you've selected developer here so to get that what we're going to do is we're going to go into macros now that single macro that i've created i want to assign a shortcut key so we're going to click on the options here and i'll just do Control f so basically when we click Control f that's going to run that macro click ok and then we're going to close that out so we're done with that now let's try it out Control f okay so it works just fine okay perfect so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this workbook here this uh, book one and i'm going to save it as an add-in so what we're going to do is we're going to go to file and then i'm going to do save as and then i am going to save it as an add-in so i'm going to do browse and what that's going to do is going to go save it as an add-in automatically so i'm going to select here the location and i'm going to scroll all the way down and i'm going to look for add-in so if we do excel add-in 97 to 2003 we got that but the one above that excel add-in that's the one excel am and we'll just call this test add-in okay and what that's going to do is as soon as we've selected the add-in it's going to save it in a specific place based on your add-ins folder so that's where it's going to save it so it's called test add-in it's an xlam file so we're going to click save okay very good now we're going to go back into the code here and inside this on this workbook so i'm going to take this workbook here and i'm going to all the way on the left side the properties is here so if you don't have this view open click properties and we're going to take a look inside the workbook here this workbook and we're looking for is added we're going to select that to true if you want to assign a password to be done here so we'll just clear that out but that's where the password would be if you want to log it so we've done is added okay save in that workbook so it's going to save we don't need to save the book one there so that's not necessary the add-ins already saved okay great so that's all we have to do now all we want to do is activate it so let's go ahead and close out everything we have then what we're going to do is we're going to activate it activate that add-in so we're going to go down here inside the developers right if we're going to click let's close let's open up a brand new workbook here okay and then we're going to go into the developers we're going to go into excel add-ins and we're going to see that we have that new test add-in here we're going to select that and click ok now if i were to do Control f it's going to automatically workbook let me show you that one more time because i want to close everything out i'm going to close all that workbook right we don't need to save anything to book two so we don't save that there's nothing and we don't have to save anything to book one our add-in is already saved okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to open up a brand new workbook here and we're just going to click on blank workbook and once again we're going to take in the developers we're going to go into excel add-ins just to make sure that test add-in is activated and if it is all i need to do is Control f and you've created your first add-in so that is it that's all we have to do to create an add-in okay great so we've got our add-in but what i want to do now is i don't want to use Control f i want to create a new tab up here just like i've done here and i want to create these really cool tabs so this is where our ai system is going to happen and that is going to be with the custom control ui toolbar and of course this custom ui editor is a free software right that you can get if you have don't have it yet what you can do is you can go down here and if you don't have this i'll include the link down below in the youtube description so all you need to do is just come down here all the way down to the bottom and you can download one of these files i suggest do the larger one in case you don't have net or the binaries this is a complete package right here so this 61 so that will get you it and basically what is that well, the custom ui editor again is an independent application that allows you to customize the ribbon it allows you to create your add additional features turn off features or create your own tab like i've done here this is the ai system in the added when you launch your add-in this will automatically add and why is that let's take a look outside this software called office ribbon editor ribbon x so there's many ui editors out there this one's called off and i like this one but they're all primarily the same so what we want to do now is we want to open up that particular application if we were going to open up right and we take a look inside we're going to browse for that file where is it if we want to go back in here we want to look at that so if we take a look inside our developer and go back into excel add-ins and we want to know the location of that we're just going to browse for that and they're located right here so i'm going to copy that location i'm going to go cancel that and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back into that ui editor and i'm just going to paste it in right here and that's going to let us know the folder of those add-ins so what i want to do is i'm going to open up we can open up our test add-in or we can open up our uh, ai assistant or both so ai assistant that's the add-in that i have created notice that it is xlam that the add-in we're going to click open what that's going to do is open it up and when we click on here custom ui editor you're going 
going to find the code here. So here is the code. This is based in XML format, and this is what's going to create this little toolbar here. Okay, so all we have here is just these two icons, and that's going to help us with our AI assistant. So we could also put it on a shortcut if we want. Not a bad idea. All right, so here's what we want to do inside this. So notice that it's going to be the custom UI editor schemas. And if we look on here, let's go ahead and open this. We see that our new one, of course, that's not going to have anything at all. So there's no icons attached to that. There's nothing. So if you have a brand new one and you want to create it, how are you going to do that? Well, what you're going to do is you're going to right click it and you're going to insert the office 210 custom ui part what that's going to do is going to launch this thing here you double click on it and you have no code and all you would really need to do is just basically copy this is the easy copy mine make sure you download my add it it's going to be free of course using the links down in the description under the download and you can paste it here and now let's take a look at some of this so that we can customize our brand new add-in if we want to do that. First of all, we don't need to change anything like here. Custom UI 2009, 7, we don't need to change that. We're going to start for Riven from scratch. That's going to be false. A tab, I want to create a brand new tab. I want to call it AI Assist. Now this is the ID. Nobody will see this, but you do want to make sure if you have several tabs, you want to make sure that this ID is unique and independent from all others. Anytime you see ID, it must be unique. I want to give it a label called AI Assistant. Notice it's the same label that you see up here. And then what I want to do is I want to create a group. Notice it's called My AI Assistant. This is a group. There's two buttons in this group here that we see on the left. So I want to create in a group ID, again, a unique ID for the group and a label called My AI Assistant. Within that group, I'm going to create two buttons. Those two buttons are, again, a unique ID. We want a button ID. Then I want a label, and that's the name that people are gonna see called AI Assistant. Then I want an image associated with that. Now I have icons. If you wanna add your own icons, all you need to do is just right click and click insert icons. And what we're gonna do is just gonna look for the icons. If you're on Patreon, I'll include those icons. And let's go ahead and find this one here. And these are the icons. I created this with AI and I created this with AI, something called Mid Journey. It was really cool. So Mid Journey is another AI engine that created these for me. Okay, so I'm going to click on this and I'm gonna click on this and I generally like to rename them. So now that I I have those two icons in here i'm going to give them a name now i've already used this there's an image name called ai assistant so what i'm going to do is just going to copy this here because that's the one i want and i'm going to right click here and i'm going to click change id and we can bring this out a little bit and so i'm going to control a and then control v I'm going to do the same thing with this one. And basically, you can create any icon you want, and as long as the name matches it. So again, we're going to do the same thing here. We've got an image name. So an image name, this one's called Secret Icon Key. So I'm going to copy that here just because we have it here. And I'm going to right click. I'm going to change the ID. And I'm going to paste it in here. Okay, great. Now we want to check to make sure our code is good. So all we need to do is check to validate. If there's any errors, you'll see something different than this. Custom UI, it'll tell you there's an error on line one or two and you can look at it. So that means our code is good, it's well formatted. And the next time we open, although we're going to have two different tabs, it's probably not a good idea. AI Assistant, I want to, let's say, test. I'm just going to put in, I want a different label, right? I don't want two tabs with the same name. So I want this one, test, right? So we're going to see test. Now keep in mind that we cannot save this if the workbook is open. So it's very important that we create two ones. So we've got a sharing group. Let's change this to test again. So I just want to make sure that they're different. Remember, different. So keep that in mind that what we want to do is you can save the workbook if you've made any changes. Obviously, we haven't made any changes. If you want to save changes inside, of course, our Visual Basic Editor, when we make changes to the add-in, here's the add-in here. Here's both add-ins. Right? So you can see here, we've got book one. We've got three of them. We've got our add-in, our original add-in assistant that we're going to be going over. We have the new one created called test add-in. We've got that module here. So you can just double click this and make sure you can save it from here. And that's going to save any changes you made to the add-in itself. Not necessarily the open workbook, which has nothing on it. So if we make a change here, here's the, we can make a change here to the macro here. We want to make sure that we, those changes are saved and we can just click save. And that's going to save changes to that add-in. Okay, very good. So we understand that. So what we want to do is we want to make sure to close out everything before, right? If we try, you'll notice that if you get this here, if I try to make it save as changes, it's going to tell me the process cannot access the file. And it's going to tell us where the add-in is because it's being used by another process. Fair enough. 
So all we need to do is close that out here. We don't need to save book one. There's nothing in the book that we're going to save. Now we can save those changes. Now there's no issue. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to open that workbook up, any workbook, it doesn't matter, or a blank workbook is just fine because these are add-ins. Now we have another tab with also with two macros, right? Now there's no macros that are associated with this. So it's going to create an error. Oh, we have the same macro, the different workbook. We have both add-ins open, so that's fine. So basically what we've done is we've created this test here. So you can see how we have that. Okay, great. Now let's say we want to remove that. We want to delete that. So all we need to do is go inside the developers, Excel add-ins, and we can remove that test added. Now, if we want to browse for that, we can't delete it unless we're actually uninstall it. So that's click OK. And so what we're going to do is we're going to close this workbook out. So we've deactivated it. We're going to open it one more time here. And then what I'm going to do is new workbook. OK, and we take a look. We see we have just a single tab open because we've deactivated the first one. I'm going to go inside the developer. And then inside Excel add-ons, and we see this test add-on is not selected. We can browse for that. If I want to delete it, I can. I can delete it. We don't need that right now, so I can delete that. Keep in mind that that will completely delete it, so only if you're using a test, right? Clicking OK. Now it's going to tell you there's an error. It says user cannot find this add-in, right? Because we just deleted it. That's fine. All we need to do is says cannot find. Do you want delete it from the list? Yes, we just deleted it. We can delete it from the list. Okay, great. So now we understand how we created the add-in. So now let's go into some more detail of the actual add-in that I created. Okay, in order to use this chat GPT API, we're going to need an API key. We're going to put that inside. So inside this, we're going to be able to add that. So what do we get our API key? Well, that's going to be inside here. So if we take a look inside here we're going to go to platform open ai account or just go into your account settings once you've created an account on open ai it's part of chat gpt we're going to go into the api keys now there's no problem you can see my keys because i'll just delete them after the training so it won't matter right it'll tell you when you use you can create a brand new key and all we need to do is just create a brand new key we're going to copy that key over and then inside excel here you're going to go in and we're going to add that secret key and we're going to paste in that key any key will work so just paste it in here and click save key so we're going to save that key so it's now saved and now we're ready to enter our prompt or question so we can do sample vba code to create an email from excel and then just enter twice and then our response will come in just a few seconds and we'll have our code all ready for sample okay and here you have it sample vba code to create an email from excel now what i like about this is it builds upon itself so let's say we have two recipients so let's say can we modify this form to include an attachment let's say i don't see an attachment sample here include an attachment sample okay and then just enter twice or you can click the button here and then what it's going to do is going to update that code so it builds upon itself right so it remembers what you've asked it before and then it'll show the sample so let's take a look at what it has for us so now we have a sample attachments add so it included it and updated the code ready for that very very cool so we can see how beneficial this can be just copy and paste it'll also fix the code okay so how do we create all this all right so let's go and close that out now i want to take a quick look back in our ui editor we've deleted this one so that's no longer exists we can just close that one i'm going to focus on just this one so what we did is we created two buttons as you can see up here giving them a label the image and the size and we've also given it a macro so this is the macro that we've created that's going to run that so one we've called ai assistant this is the assistant it's going to be the macro is called ai assistant launch and the secret key is called ai assistant secret key so let's go ahead and take a look inside this module and we have our book one there's nothing here so we have our module called chat gpt macros okay so inside this one now when we create a macro that is associated with the button on a ribbon so in other words we've got two macros here we can add to quick alice we can customize and collapse the ribbon so we've got two macros the ones that i've just shown you in here so we, these are the two macros right here and right here a launch and assistant add secret key so those are the same two macros that we have launch and secret key so anytime we create a macro from a ui editor ribbon button we need to make sure that we've set it as control as i ribbon control so notice both of these have that okay so the first thing we're going to focus on is adding that secret key 
Okay, so we already know how to extract our secret key. We've already been over that from here. So we know how to do that. Once we have it, what we need to do in an add-in that's a little bit more tricky because what I want to do is I want to open up a window. Now we have a that form you saw, it's called add or edit chat GPT. We can edit it or we can save it. We'll just put in the secret key here. So it's a very simple form and it tells you where we can get those keys. But what we really want to do is we want to be able to save it. Now the trick is with an add-in, right? We can't save it in any workbook. So that's the trick, right? We cannot save it. So where are we going to save that secret key on our computer so that it is always remembered and we can recall we actually have to save it inside the computer because we cannot save it and it's, it's not any specific workbook so what we can do is we can save it inside something called the registry and i believe it's something similar in mac but don't hold me to that mac users if you're a mac user and you know just let me know and i'll make sure to update my code and i'll show you so there's something called the registry key now microsoft excel can do this very very easy through vba in a single line of code to do that so all we would need to do is save it in the registry and we can recall it from there so what it does is it creates it and all we need to do is we can get the setting here or we can create it using a very simple process so if we're going to save it we're going to use one line of code and i'll go over that for you in a moment but basically this is the place where it's going to store so what our macro is going to do is going to be called inside the registry now what is the registry editor if you click on the windows button if you're in windows and then you type in run what that's going to do is going to launch something like this called run right all we need to do is just click on the registry edit and that's going to edit now you may not know where it's going to store it's going to be stored and it's got some really crazy uh, number here but what we can do is give it a very specific name and then we search for it right so if, if we're in some other folder here right we don't know where it is and we want to look for it what we're going to do is we've given it a very specific name we want to find it when we save it when we save it which is going to be down here i'll go over that in a minute i'm going to save it as a chat gpt added and I'm going to save it as an API code. So all I really need to do is I can search for this I'm going to because it's very unique. So I'm going to copy that. And if I don't know where in our registry it's going to be saved because Microsoft will choose that, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into file right here or view actually. Or you can do control F right to find. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do chat GPT admin. I'm going to find the next. And what that's going to do is going to search your entire registry. And it's going to find that specific location where it's been saved. And what it's going to do, here it is right here. So here we have it. So if we say down here, let's take a look in the folder structure here. Here's the folder in which it's been saved. So let's take a look. So it's chat BTT. Then there's something called settings. And then there's something called API code. And then here's my API code right here. So here it is. If we were to edit it, we could obviously modify it through here, but we don't need to. So basically, all we're going to be doing inside Excel is doing just that. And we could do it with a single line of code, which is here. But I'm getting ahead just so you know where we're saving it. Okay. So what I want to do with the add secret key is I want to look up. In other words, when I click this button, what do I want to do? I want to look to see if there's a secret key that's already been saved inside that registry location and if it is then i want to pull it up so that's what we're going to do we're going to look it up and if it doesn't it'll just show blank so that's exactly what i want to do so we're going to dimension the secret key as a string and all we're going to do is we're going to get whatever's located in the folder in the settings and in the api code remember it's the same structure as here we're just no, let's take a look at that one more time in the folder in the chat GPT folder in the settings and in the api code so it's just a tree branch and all we're going to be doing is pulling the data out of there it's a very simple way to store data on someone's computer and i'm not sure about max but i've put down something here if it's a mac do the same thing and i'm just going to update this code when i get more information on a mac okay so what i'm going to do is if there's any secret key that's already stored in this location it's going to put it in this variable now if the secret key doesn't equal empty then what i'm going to do is i'm going to take it and i'm going to put it inside this form if we take a look back inside the secret key form i've got one field and the name of that field is called secret key sec key so i'm going to take whatever value and i'm going to place it directly inside here and that's all we're going to be doing on here so add secret key is the form name secret key is the of course the field name and the value is going to be the secret key add existing secret key from the registry and then we're going to show the form obviously if there's no secret key we can empty it out okay great so that's how we launch it but what about if i want to save it i'm going to go into this form here i'm going to right click and i'm going to go to the view code 
Now we only have two buttons, so therefore we only have the cancel button. All we're gonna do is simply hide the form. If we're going to save it, we're gonna run this macro called AI Assistant Save Key. Now it's very simple because I have all of everything on the same module here, and that's the one right here called Save Key. Secret key check, I'll do that in a minute. We're just gonna make sure. And then so save key is again all we're going to do is first of all we want to make sure inside this form the add secret key form i want to make sure that the value if it's empty let the user know please make sure to add a secret key before saving okay and then what we're, we're going to do is we're simply going to hide the form if it's a mac we're going to do this which is pretty much exactly the same code although it's not been tested so you can let me know on that if it's a pc we're going to do this if the ai assist is visible i want to show the form i want to just want to show the, that means basically I want to launch this form right away and that's called the AI assist form also what I want to do is I want to save that API okay so how do I save that API again save settings very simple to the registry key the folder it'll create this folder if it doesn't exist another subfolder called settings it's going to create a registry key called API code and then it's going to save the value of that called add secret key the secret key value so it's going to take whatever value is in that form and it's going to put it in this registry that's it it's very very simple to add to that registry okay great now this one we're simply checking in this macro we're just going to check to make sure if the value is empty that means there's no secret key please make sure to add a secret key in your open ai secret key and then we're going to show the form and so i just want to run this macro when we generate the response so we're going to do that okay great so that's pretty much it let's take a look let's take a look back so that's pretty much it's very very simple when we are going to add a secret key it's going to pull it up now notice if i make a change to this secret key i've set some code so it'll automatically tell you that the secret key is wrong so i'll show you that in a moment okay so it's cancel and save key very simple okay and then it's going to launch that form if it's not now i've created this form here let's take a look inside this form some of the details we have in this form we've got three buttons i've got a close i've got a clear and what that's going to do is going to clear any responses if we want and we've got a question and this is button is going to send the question so it's a relatively simple form i've created a background on the form now that background is just a, of course a picture and if we take a look inside the form we'll go over some of the details of that form it's called the ai assist form now i want this form to appear always that means when i want to be able to one have the form and also want to be able to use it to use that so to do that we want to make sure that inside the form here when we're viewing the object and viewing the properties where it says model right modal show modal i want to make sure that is false not model show modal is false if it were true right then the user would have to close the form i want to keep it false okay so that means the form can stay up all the time okay so inside this form i really have just two fields here the first field is called here response so it's just called response and the second field all the way down here let's bring that down here the second and last field is simply called prompt so this is called prompt it's also known as question okay i've got a close button that's called the close button I've got a clear button now the clear button now to get this icon in here there's a few different ways I've just put the picture in the background that means notice that the picture is there right so I've just used it as a background and I've done the same thing with this this icon is just a picture that's attached to the background so the button's separate okay so keep that in mind then I've created two buttons again the clear button and I've called the request button request button so we're going to do that I've got a label here I want this label called generate response label this label here I only want to show up when we're generating the response and as soon as the response is available I want it to go away so I'm going to show you how to do that okay so the form is relatively simple again I've just got a picture background here if we were to take a look at the picture we can see that there's a picture here it's a bitmap picture if I were to zoom I'll include this picture uh, for our patreon members if i want to open that picture I'm simply going to show that picture in my viewer and so you can see it's a very simple picture that you can use in the form so we've got the icons behind the picture within the picture okay great so we understand how that picture works and we're just going to place that as the background it's a simple form so we can now close that out and we can focus on the macro this is the macro that's going to run at that button let's take a quick look back inside but this time we're going to view the code of this and we've got really just three buttons 
clear button. If the clear button, all we're going to do is take that response and we're going to clear it out. Now, this is important. When we clear the response out, it clears all the history and we can start a brand new subject. If you don't clear it out, it'll build the response. Keep in mind that there is a limit of about 4,500 or 4,200 characters as of now. So, but I've built in that. That means if you reach that limit, you'll get a message box. I'll show you that in a moment. The close button, all we're going to do is hide the form. And then the request button, all we're going to do is run the macro called generate response. And that is the macro that I'm going to go over right now with you called generate response. Okay, since we're going to be sending an HTTP request, we need to dimension the O XML HTTP as an object. We're going to define that later. We're going to bind it. It's going to be called late binding. So we're just defining it as an object now. All right, so we're going to dimension the AI response as a string. We want the body as a string and the prompt, which is the question the user is going to send as a string. The response that we get back from our AI, right, back from ChatGPT API, is going to be called the response. The secret key, that's good. we're going to extract that because we need to send that as well. And the parsed answer, in other words, the answer that we're going to get back, and I'll show you what that looks like, needs to be parsed. It needs to be streamlined and cleared out. It needs to be converted. So I'll show you how to do that. Context is string. I don't think I'll be using it. I'll be using this. Context is basically what we've said previously, and I'll explain why that's important. So we're going to run the macro secret key check. Remember, this macro, all we're going to do is just to make sure that they have a value inside this setting here. And if it's empty, of course, we're going to let the user know and we're going to exit the sub out. So we're going to run that macro to check the open API key. We're going to set the secret key equal to, again, the chat GPT add-in settings and API code. It's very easy to extract that from the registry. And I think this can be really helpful when we're storing license information and things that you want to store on a computer and not necessarily on. And this is a great idea. If we're going to be doing like software and we store the license number on a computer and the user tries to move his application to another computer, that API is not going to be stored. That license is not going to be stored on that computer. And therefore, you can say, hey, this is not the computer you've registered it on. Do you want to register a new copy? So it's a great way to, to securely add it, assuming that the user doesn't know where you're setting those API keys, setting those settings. So keep that in mind. All right, continuing on with the, we're going to focus on the AI assist form. If the prompt value equals empty, of course, there's no quite remember prompt is question. If there's no question, then please make sure to enter a prompt or request. Okay, we're going to exit the sub. If they haven't put any question, there's nothing we can do. Now, I want to make sure that visible, remember that label that called general response label visible generate response. I want to show that label. That label, of course, is this object right here. This label here called generate response. That's the name of it, general response label. I want to display that. And then I want to click do events, meaning, excuse me, I want to add the line do events. And the reason I want to do that after, which is here, it means the code will continue to run. Everything's going to continue to run while this is displaying so that it'll continue. And then it's going to turn off at the end of the code. So I want to make sure it displays right away before that. So we're going to use do events. We're going to set the context. This is very, very important as a response value. And why is that important? It's very important. And it took me a while to figure out the API. For example, here's the problem. If I don't, let's say I said, please show me a sample of a sum product formula. So context means what have you said before? We, we want to have a conversation with this chat API. The API does not remember if I say, can you show me another sample? It won't remember what you said before. So what I have to do is I have to take all this information and send it back in the API. So if I say it's, this is called context, right? Context is what have we been talking about? So here it knows what we've been talking about. We've been talking about some product. So it shows another example, right? So all I had to say was, can you show me another example? So what we need to do is we need to make sure that the API understands what is the context of the conversation that we're having. Now, if we clear this out, it won't remember. For example, if I clear this out and I say, can you show me another example? I have no idea what it's going to return, but it's not going to be accurate. It's not going to be about the sum product, certainly. A carpenter is someone who uses, <laughs> okay, it, it makes no sense. Do you understand now? So without that history available to us, it doesn't know what we're talking about. So context is very, very important. So you see the same question, but a completely different answer because it has no context. So what I want to do is whatever we've been talking about inside here, I want to make sure it gets saved inside a variable. And that's what we're going to do. So the context is whatever the conversation that we've been having in the response value. So it's previous prompts and the responses. So not only do I put 
the question, but I put the answer inside there. So both will go in there. So it's both the questions and the answers. So that's going to help to give it history. We're going to send, so we're not only sending the question, we're going to send the entire history of the conversation so that it can see everything and build context and, and have a much better answer based on all the information that you've sent. Okay, so the prompt is, of course, the question that you've asked. It. Now, that's all we need to send it. So we need to send the context, the prompt, and we also need to send the secret key. So now what we're going to do is we're going to inlay binding. We're going to set that OXML HTTP to create objects. We're going to create an MSXML to that server. And thank you, Sammy, for help on this code. Sammy streamlined this code to, so we didn't need to use make. OXML.open. We're going to post to that. We want to post. And we're going to send it directly to the OpenAI version one completions. This is the what you're going to find inside their API. It says send it right here. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to send that. Now the AI body is the model. Now keep in mind that this will change in the future. And what I mean is like that every time they have like an update, it's like a virgin, right? We're on text DaVinci 3 and they may go to 4. So as it makes updates, we'll want to change this because there's newer, it's like the engine that runs it. So these are newer engines giving them different models. So it's like the engine gets replaced. So the model we're using is called text DaVinci 003. That's the newest one. Our prompt, now here's prompt. What's our prompt? Our prompt is both the context and the prompt, right? So I want to send both to that, right? And very important. But the first thing is it doesn't recognize new lines. So what I want to do is I want to replace quotes. It has a problem with quotation marks. Now in Excel, quotation marks is character 34. So this quotation mark, the character values character 34. So what I want to do is take any quotation mark that is inside the response or prompt or anywhere in the text, anywhere in the context, and I want to replace it with that backslash. And I want to replace it with another character. So basically, anytime we have that, it's going to be replaced with this. So that replacement, it understands that. So basically, what are we going to replace it with? And also, anytime we have a new line, there's a new line, I want to replace it with backslash N. So basically, when we send it, it understands new lines as backslash N. Even in our responses, we get that. So when we get our responses, we're going to take anything that comes with N and we're going to replace it with VB new line. So it's important basically to translate uh, so that it understands. It doesn't understand the way we do characters. So we want to make sure to use backslash. Backslash is very, very important for that. That's going to be the quotation mark. Okay, so we're going to do that. I want to replace that both within the context and I want to do the same thing within the prompt as well. So both the context and the prompt. So I'm doing exactly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send all of this and remember it understands this as new line. So this means one new line and this is another new line. It's like it's the same thing as VB new line or also character 10. Same thing. So this is just going to be new line. So we're adding two new lines. We're separating the previous conversation and the new question here. So the new question, again, we're also going to replace any quotation marks with the backslash. So and a backslash and a quotation mark. So that's how we want to do it. So existing quotation marks get changed to a backslash and in a quotation mark. And also any new lines get replaced with a backslash and end. So this is treated as a new line. This is treated as a quotation mark inside that. Okay, next up we want temperature. Now the temperature, the lower the temperature, the more standard response. The higher the temperature, the more risks it takes. So if you're looking for more risks, you can take this. Perhaps we can put this inside a variable inside that, but I've left it at 0.5, which is about even. Okay, the max tokens we set to 3,500. Now keep in mind that max tokens is basically like characters. The longer your string gets, the longer the characters get. And once you get to a maximum, it's going to have a limit and it'll tell you, you need to clear your history. In other words, there's the maximum amount of text that you can send. Once you reach that, we'll have a warning for that. Okay, so that's the request that we're going to be making. Okay, once we've set that request, we set that all into the AI body. What I want to do is I want to set some headers. We're going to set the content type as application JSON. That's pretty standard for any type of a JSON request. Then we also want the authorization, and this is where our secret key comes. The authorization is going to be the bearer and the secret key. So this is what you need to authorize it so that you know it's your account. Then all we need to do is basically send that and wait for the response. So the response is going to come into this variable. It's going to come into oxml.responseText. I'm going to extract that response. And then what I do, if the response contains the word incorrect API provided, that's the response that you're going to get if something's wrong with the API. Then I want to let the user know, incorrect API key provided. 
you can find your API key and then I'll just put the link here. So we're going to exit the sub. That means if there's some issue with the API key, this response, the response will include this text. So I'm letting the user know. Also, if we've sent too much information, in other words, we have a very long conversation and we've sent too much maxima, we're going to get a response, something like this Mac that includes the response will include maximum contact length. So that means that string that comes back is going to include this. And I want to let the user know you have reached the maximum content length. Please clear the history. Clearing the history would be right here. So they have to clear this history and then it would be fine to move forward. So that's that those are just limits set on the API. So that's all we can do. Okay, I also want the response. I'm going to show the response in the immediate because I want to show you this is not necessary, but I want to show you what comes in as the raw response. So then what we want to do is we want to parse it. So what might that look like? Well, let's take a look inside the immediate window, see if we have anything there available. Let's take a look. We've got some there that we've said. So the response looks something like this. However, you've requested so token. So if we get again, here's what happens when I got too large, please reduce. So I got this response. This was the response that I got when I kept going on and on and on and asking them to redo the code. It got so long. I got this response. So it, gets, it says, here's the maximum. So the response says 409 tokens. However, you've requested 42. So the maximum is 4097. We requested 4244, 744 in your prompt and 3500 for the completion. So that was our question. And the completion was here. So for the completion, please reduce your prompt. So we had a lot of text. The reason our prompt maybe is because our prompt also includes the context, which is the previous conversation and our question. So that our question wasn't this long, but remember our question always includes the context and our prompt. Remember, so we always want to send that with that. So it says, please clear your history. So that's the response that I got. Okay. So when we get to a completion, we're going to get something like this completion here created send. So this is, let's say send email. We had an email sample. So we're going to get all of this. This is our response. It's called text. So our text sub send email started right here. So basically what I want to do is I want everything before this point right here. I don't want to show the user. So what I want to do is I want to parse out this and get rid of it. Also, what about the end of it? If I look all the way over here and I take a look end sub, the end is an index wherever it says index like comma quotation marks index i want to get rid of that too everything after index here here it is right here i want to get rid of that so only the middle section do i want to keep so we're going to use the mid function so let's take a look inside this function right i could have separated this out a little bit so what i want to do is i want to create that response here so it's going to be let's go back down here our parsed answer is the string that we want that answer so i'm not i'll get to these replace replace in just a moment they're relatively simple but what we want is the mid right so i'm in the mid of the response what i want to do is i want to look for text quotation marks colon quotation marks and n that's the start of it so let's take a look at one more time so we can see that response and that's why it's helpful so again text quotation marks, colon, quotation marks, backslash n, backslash n. So that's what I'm going to be looking for. And then I'm going to add seven characters. Why seven? Because this is four characters. This is three here and four. So I want to include, I want to exclude these characters as well. So I'm adding seven. So that's the starting point. But now how many characters, right? For the mid, we need to know the starting point. We also need to know how many characters we're going to be using and the end point. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to use the in string. We need to get the length. We're going to subtract the response and the index we're using index again because i want to look for that index but not just index i want to look for the quotation marks a comma quotation marks and index that's going to be the end of it right so i'm looking for the end again quotation marks comma quotation marks index wherever that is that is going to be our end point so i'm looking that i'm going to subtract out the starting point what is the starting point again it's exactly the same text quotation marks colon quotation marks and end. so this is our starting point so i'm going to take to get the midpoint, again, we're starting the end point minus the starting point. That's going to get us the number of characters. And then all we need to do is I want to actually do a replace. Remember, there's also two replaces. So that's our mid. But what are we replacing? Again, remember I told you that anytime we see this N, it's really a new line. So when we get that response, when I get this response, you see this NN, this is in our response. I actually want to show a new line. 
You see this N in our response? I want to change all of these backslash ends with actually a new line. So we're going to take all of those found and actually replace it with a new line. Also, anytime we show the backslash and quotation marks, I want to replace it with a quote. So I don't know if there's any inside this here, this response here. Backslash, quotation mark. You see that right here? This run, these two characters, I want to replace it with a quotation mark. The subject of this email, right? So that's what I want to replace with an actual quotation mark. So basically, I'm taking their response and I'm putting it into something that we can understand. Looking for backslash plus the quotation marks and replacing it with just a single quote. That's all. So that's all we're doing on the to replace. That's going to get us our parsed answer. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that parsed answer and I'm going to place it directly inside that field. The response value equals whatever currently is there plus two new lines and the question. So I'm going to, not only am I putting the parsed answer in here, I want to put whatever value is was there before. I'm going to add two new lines. I'm going to put in whatever the question the user asked two new lines and the parsed answer. So let's take a look at what that might look like one more time that we can do that. Okay, let's try this. Let's say display sample VBA code to show how to sort a range. All right, and we'll go ahead and hit enter or enter twice. And what we can do is generate that response. Now we take a look inside the response. It says display sample code, two new lines, sub sort range, range, okay. And add, let's say what if the last row is a variable. Let's build on that. What if the last row of the range is variable. Let's see what happens then. I'm going to click OK here. And we're going to take a look inside that. All right, once we see that, it's going to say Sorens. Now we've got the last row. We have a variable last row inside our range. Perfect. So you see how it builds the context. It adds two new rows. We may not need the two new rows between that. I'll probably remove one of those. And it's going to build upon that. So one of those, we don't need extra space there. Okay, so it's got a really, really nice code here that we can automatically create and it builds upon itself. So very, very, very cool. So that's all the code we have. So we're, then all we need to do after that, we're going to prompt value. We want to clear the question, right? I want to clear that question out so they can ask another question. And then lastly, what I want to do is I want to take that label generating response, that red label, and I want to hide that, make that visible equals false. That is it. That's all we have to do to create this incredible AI add-in that will work in any workbook. I hope you have enjoyed this incredible training to create your own. You can download this add-in, of course, using the links down below. If you do like these trainings, I've got some incredible courses for you, including my mentorship course. If you want to learn how to create your own applications for passive income, while I define design, develop, and deploy your Excel-based applications for passive income, then the mentorship course is for you. While I build an incredible accounting application right in the course, you can reach that at myexcelmentor.com or the links below. Thank you so much for your continued support, and we'll see you next week.